Hello everyone. If you have been following our research, you will see how the decodings of sacred geometries, mandalas, scriptures, the Nazca lines, geoglyphs, petroglyphs, hieroglyphs, the Book of Enoch, various cultures and belief systems, the research of real world data, those halos in the sky, earthquake data, the mimic map and much much more decode into a technological and mechanical realm, a construct of vast magnitude and magnificence, described and depicted everywhere in our history. The same story of the underworld, the heavens and their workings, repeated over and over no matter where you look. A history and knowledge we seem to have forgot. Pieces of a jigsaw that slot together into one amazing construct and conclusion. There is a creator. In our previous video we showed how the sun's 24 hour path works within this model. After looking back in history to see how the sun's return path is depicted, we arrive at the Egyptian depictions of the 12 gates. The sun's return path in the underworld. Today One Conscience is going to take you on that amazing journey which we will break down further after the presentation. Okay, so today we're going to look at the book of Am Tuat. The summary of the book of what is in the underworld. So what this book is, is it is a journey of the sun's path as it takes it through the underworld from the western gates back to the eastern gates to rise again. So let's begin. Um, I want to say from the start that if I mispronounce any words, I apologize. Um, I'm not fluent in Egyptian at all. And any corrections are welcome. The beginning of the horn of Ementent, which is the uttermost point of the deepest darkness. The first hour. This god entereth into the earth through the hall of the horizon of Amentant. There are 120 a true to the journey over this hall before man arriveth at the gods of Tuat. The name of the first field is Netra. He alloweth fields to the gods who are in his following, and he beginneth to send forth words to and to work out the plans of the divine beings of the Tuat in respect to this field. Ushimehatu Heftira is the name of the first hour of the night which guided this great god through the hall. The second hour. This great god afterwards taketh up his position in your nest, which is 309 a true in length and 120 a true in width. The name of the gods who are in this field are is Be Beutu Eti. Whosoever shall know what their names shall have his existence with them, and unto him shall this great God allot in fields to the place wherein they are in the field of yearnings. He shall God, gods who stand up. He shall travel on in the following of this great God. He shall enter into the earth. He shall force a way through the Tuat. He shall cleave a passage through the trusses of the gods with flowing hair. He shall travel on by the Emma. After the emptying of the lands, he shall eat bread cakes in the boat of earth. And there shall be given unto him the forepart of the Tatuba. She sat Mekat Nebs is the name of this hour of the night, which guideth this great God through the field. The third hour. This great God afterwards taketh up his position in the fields of the Peru gods, the fighters. And this great god paddleth his way over the stream of Osiris 
in selling up this field, which is 309 a true long and 120 a true wide. This great God uttereth words to those who are in the following of Osiris to the city, and he allalleth them estates which are situated in this field. Beu Shi Teu, or hidden souls, is the name of the gods who are in this field, and whoever knoweth their names upon earth shall be able to approach the place where Osiris is, and there shall be given unto him water for his field. Netnibu Aheparua Atu is the name of this field. Whosoever shall know these hidden, hidden similitudes of the hidden souls in the correct form wherein they are depicted in Ament of the Tuat, now the beginning of such repre representation should be from Amentent. These figures, I say, shall act as magical protectors to that man upon earth and in Netterhurt regularly and unfailingly. Whosoever knoweth these when he is making his journey past them shall escape from their roarings, and he shall not fall, fall down into their furnaces. Whoever knoweth this when he is keeping ward over his seat or place, his bread cake shall be with Ra, and whosoever knoweth this being soul and spirit shall have the mastery over his legs and shall never enter into the place of destruction, but he shall come forth with his attributes, and shall snuff the air for his hour. Then Tent Beu is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great God. The fourth hour. The majesty of this great God, having been towed along afterwards, taketh up his position in the secret circle of Amentent, and he performeth the affairs of the gods of the Tuat, who are therein by means of his voice, but he seeth them not. Ankh Huperu is the name of the gate of this circle. Ament Setha is the name of the circle. Whosoever knoweth this representation of hidden roads of Restatet and the holy paths of the Amahat and the secret doors which are in the land of Seeker, Seeker, the God who is upon his sand shall be in the condition of him that eateth the bread cakes which are made for the mouth of the living gods in the temple of Tem. Whosoever knoweth this shall be in the condition of him that is Mott on the ways, and he shall journey over the roads of Risatha, and he shall see the representations of the Amahat. Yurtem Sik Muset is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great God. The fifth hour. This great God is towed along over the ways of Mott, of the Tuat, through the upper half of this secret circle of the God's seeker who is upon his sand, and he neither look upon nor gaze, gazeth at the secret figure of the earth, which is containeth the flesh of this God. The gods who are in the train of this God hear the words of Ra, who crieth unto them from where this God is. Aha Neturu is the name of the door of the city. Ament is the name of the circle of this God and in it are the secret paths of a mentent, and the doors of the hidden palace, and the holy palace of the land seeker, with his flesh, and his members, and his body, in the divine form which they had at first. 
Bayu Amu Tuat is the name of the gods who are in this circle. Their forms, Aru, who are in their hour, and their secret shapes, Heperu, neither know nor look upon nor see this image or similitude of seeker or the hawk himself. Whosoever shall make these representations according to the image which is in the writing of the hidden places of Tuat at the south of the hidden palace, and whosoever shall know them shall be at peace, and his soul shall unite itself with the offerings of Sikr. The goddess Hebet shall not hack his body into pieces. He shall go on his way towards her in peace. Whosoever shall make offerings to those gods upon earth, these offerings, I shall say, act as magic protectors to that man upon earth, and in the netter hurt regularly and unfailingly. Samharabis is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great god through the field. The sixth hour. The majesty of this great god taketh up his position in the stream of Neb Nebmut Tuatu, the lord of the waters of the god of the Tuat, and he sendeth forth words to the gods who are therein, and he commandeth that they have the mastery over their divine offerings in this city. He maketh his way through this field being provided with his boat, and he setteth apart by his words the estates which are to produce their offerings in the city, and he giveth them water for their lakes, and he travel through the Tua every day. Setmetu is the name of the door of this city. The secret roads of Amentent and the manner wherein this great god is being rowed along over the water therein in his boat to perform the plans of the gods of the Tuat. The gathering together of them by their names and the manifestation of their shapes and their secret hours, such are the things of which the secret representations of the Tuat is not known to men and women. Whosoever shall make a copy of this image in writing according to the representation of the same which is in the hidden things of Tuat, at the south of the hidden palace, and whosoever shall know them shall be in the condition of one who awardeth offerings in abundance in the Tuat, and he shall be united to the offerings of the gods who are in the following of Osiris and his parents, shall make the offerings which are oblig obligatory on earth. The majesty of this great God sendeth forth words, and he give divine offerings to the gods of the Tuat, and he standeth up by them, and they see him, and they have dominion over their fields, and over the gifts made to them, and they effect their transformations by reason of the words which this great God hath spoke to them. Machet Nib Tu Atio is the name of this field, which is the road of the boat of Ra. Mespirit Taramat is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great god through the country. Next is the seventh hour. The majesty of this great God taketh up his position in the secret place of Osiris, and the majesty of this great God sendeth forth words into the God who dwell therein. This God maketh himself other forms for this hidden place in order to drive out his path, the serpent fiend, a pep, by means of the word of the power of Isis and the words of power of Semsu. 
Ruti Asar is the name of the gate of this city through which this god passes. Tefet Shita is the name of this city. This great god maketh his way over the road of Ament in the holy boat, and he passes in it over the road which is without water, without being towed along. He maketh his way by means of the words of the power of Isis, and by means of the words of the power of Samsu. And the utterances of this great god himself act as magical protectors and perform the slaughters of Epeth in the Tuat, in the circle, in his windings in the sky. Whosoever shall make a copy according to the similitudes which are in writing at the northern side of the hidden palace in the Tuat, they shall act as magical protectors for him that maketh them in heaven and in earth. And whosoever knoweth them shall be a soul of souls with Ra. And whosoever shall make the words of power of Isis and the words of power of Semsu shall make to be driven back the Apep of Ra and Amentent. Whosoever do this in the hidden palace of Tua, and whosoever shall do this upon earth, the result is the same. Whosoever knoweth this shall be in the boat of Ra, both in heaven and upon earth. But he that hath no knowledge of this representation shall not know how to drive back Niha Hara, or stinking face. Now the ridge of earth of Nihahara in Tuat is 450 cubits in length, and he fill it, filleth it with the undulations of his body. The regions which belong to him are made for him, and the great God doth not make, doth not make his way over him when he maketh him to turn aside out of the way for him. From this secret place of Osiris, when this god maketh his way through the city in the form of the serpent, Mehen, whosoever shall know this upon earth, the serpent, Nihahara, shall not drink his water, and the soul of him that knoweth it shall not be evilly entreated by the gods who are in this circle. And whosoever knoweth it, the crocodile, Abshua, shall not devour his soul. Hasef ha hes nihara is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great God through the circle. The eighth hour. When the majesty of this great God hath taken up his position in the secret circles of those who are in their sand, he sendeth forth words to them from out of his boat, and the gods tow along him that is in the holy embrace of the serpent Mehen. Aha Nertif is the name of the gate of the city. Tibet Neteruset is the name of the city. As for the secret circle of Amentent, this great god maketh his way over it in his boat by means of towing the gods who are in the Tuat. Whosoever shall make a copy of these things according to the similitude which is in writing on the north wall of the hidden palace of Tuat, and whosoever shall know them by their names, shall be in the condition of one who is fully provided with swathings on the earth, and he shall never be repulsed at the secret gates, and he shall have an abundance of offerings in the great funeral hall regularly and unfailingly for millions of years. Nebtusha is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great God. The ninth hour.
when the majesty of this great God hath taken up his position in the circle, he sendeth forth words from his boat to the gods who dwell therein. And the sailors join the boat of this great God in the city. Sakeb is the name of the gate of this city through which the great God Pathis to take up his position on the stream which is in the city. Asaru is the name of the city which the secret circle of Amentant wherein take up their positions in the Tuat, this great God, and his sailors. Whosoever maketh a copy these things in their names according to the similitude which are in writing on the east wall of the hidden palace of the Tuat, and whosoever knoweth their names upon earth, and knoweth their habitation in Amentant, shall rest in his habitation in the Tuat, and he shall stand among the lords of the provisions of the God, and his voice shall be mot before the Chacha beings on the day of the reckoning of Pharaoh. And these things shall act as magical protectors to him that knoweth them upon earth. Machnebs is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great God in the circle. The tenth hour. The majesty of this great God taketh up his position in the circle, and he sendeth forth words to the gods who are in it. Aheparu Mesaru is the name of the gate of this city through which this God patheth. Mech Kayatabu is the name of the city. This is the secret circle of Amentent, whereto Hepara joineth himself before Ra, and the gods and the spirits, and the dead cry out from it over the secret representations of Akert. Whosoever shall make a copy of these representations according to the figures which are depicted on the east wall of Ament, and whosoever knoweth them by their names shall journey around about in the Tuat, and shall travel through it. And he shall not be driven back, and he shall flourish with Ra. Tenteneth Swahakabu is the name of the hour of the night which guided this great God through the secret ways of this city. The eleventh hour. <clears throat> the majesty of this great God taketh up his position in the circle, and he sendeth forth words unto the gods who are therein. Sekhantuatiu is the name of the gate of this city through which the great god patheth. Rinkurt Apthat is the name of the city. This is the secret circle of the Tuat into which the great god patheth on his way. And he come forth at the eastern mountain of the sky, the eater of eternity, the form thereof is in the presence of the serpent Petra, which dwelleth in this city, and they, the gods, place themselves in the train of Ra, when the birth of Hepar upon the earth is just about to take place. Whosoever shall make a copy of these representations according to the figures which are depicted on the east wall of the palace of Ament, in the hidden places of the Tuat, and whosoever knoweth them shall be in the position of him that divideth his offering, and of him who is spirit, who is suitably equipped to travel both in heaven and upon earth regularly and unceasingly. Sibit Nab Ahesafuimert is the name of the hour of the night which guideth this great God in the circle. In the twelfth hour, 
the majesty of this great God taketh up his position in the circle at the limits of the thick darkness. And this great God is born under the form of Hepera in the circle. The gods Nu and Amu and He and Heet are in this circle at the birth of this great God. When he maketh his appearance from the Tuat and taketh up his place in the Matet boat and riseth from between the thighs of the goddess Met. Then then Netteru is the name of the gate of this city. Heperkeku Hemesti is the name of the city. This is the circle of the Tuat wherein the great God is born. When he maketh his appearance in the new and taketh up his place in the body of Nut, whosoever shall make a copy of these representations according to the figures which are depicted on the east wall of the palace of Ament of the Tuat, they shall be magical protectors to him that knoweth them upon earth, both in heaven and on earth. At this point the light beginneth to come, and it is the end of the thick darkness which Ra traveleth through in a men tent, and of the secret matters which this great God performed therein. He who hath knowledge of the whole or part of the secret representations of the Tuat shall be condemned to destruction. Whosoever make a copy of these representations according to this copy of what is in Amend and Tuat cannot be looked at or seen, and whosoever shall know these secret images shall be in the condition of spirit who is equipped for journeying, and shall come forth from, and shall descend into the Tuat, and shall hold converse with the men and women who live there regularly and unfailingly millions of times. The End Okay, the sun's return path home to the east. Let's break that down a bit more. I'll take you over to the Nazca lines. So the sun arrives at the Tumi in the far west. The Tumi being the ceremonial knife which switches off the signal, basically, it's a kill switch. If you remember the overlays, the Tumi, the ceremonial knife. A nice image of it there. So this is a process that's handling the shutdown of the sun projector in the west basically and following its connections here you will see where it's connected to mechanisms, cogs Take a good look people, this is the mechanisms in the underworld which would handle the shutting down of the sun when it uh, arrives in the west and this would be here, the sun isolator, I would call this a geoglyph break the signal, kill, kill the projection Isolate it, then all the other four, uh, all the other processes follow. And there's the solar clock, the the timing. So you know it's timed, timed event. Sun's arrived in the west. Sh shut it down. This is what you're really looking at. All the technology works and controls and manages the sun. Do we have any evidence in the real world of these kind of events? Yes. This is the signal detected on the mimic map. You can see on here. I've started using overlays with our map in the background so you can make out the maps a bit larger than the show. And you can see these amazing signals going around. Now I've added the chakras and then some last kind of overlays to this. So you can get an idea what's going on. If you watch it carefully you will see it looping around going to various places. Now remember we'll look at the 12 gates so the sun's return path involves going through 12 different gates. And this is the return path looping over and over, back to backwards, forwards, popping in and out of everywhere. It doesn't make a lot of sense until you overlay the chakras and the Nazca lines. And then you can start seeing where it's really going and what's going on. So the mimic signal we've seen, uh, which was the winter equinox in 2016, that's where the signal came from. This is one of the sun's return paths in the underworld. It gets to the, it returns back to the east, if you watch this carefully, it'll go through its system of various locations in its cleaning cycles that it's obviously involved in. It'll arrive back over in the east eventually and if you watch the bottom of the screen carefully, you'll see all the signalling to tell the rest of the system. Sun's arrived back in the east, reset the system, shut it down, so 
watch carefully at the bottom there we go signals reset the system sun's arrived start again so then you you've got the sunrise in the east starting over again so that's the sun's return path in the underworld amazing stuff and you can see how the grid in the background is manipulating that signal the white dots being the angels in the underworld they're clearly playing a part in manipulating and controlling this signal so that's information from the mimic map Nazca line of overlays which you watch like I said watch where it's going you will see it going to certain areas when you overlay the Nazca lines that over these over this on the grid you can see where it's going into one place and coming out of another amazing stuff okay for this next part we're now going to break down what's going on in this scene the the middle register we're going to have a quick look at that and we're going to show you how that relates to the two me in the west if you notice these characters here the, the the arms are missing in other words disconnected it's been switched off shut down the sun's reached the west shut it down so there right there that's an off switch disconnected of course with this kind of process comes waste there's waste to manage and dispose of so there's some waste in that depiction and the other components of the projection system is here you've obviously gone through a cleaning cycle no projection so that's pretty straightforward to look at that image right the middle register oh no sorry the top one top right there you can see the tree of life um, scene yet again that should be coming a, a very common theme by now the tree of life scene it's depicted everywhere in every culture and religion we knew this we depicted this everywhere we knew how this worked we were taught this you just can't get away from that once you start looking into this this tree of life is going to pop up everywhere and of course they're going to need new fuel so the new fuel is generated I'll be explaining a bit more about that process soon and of course waste management again which one conscience will be talking about in a few moments we've got some waste management to dispose of so there's, there has to be in the underworld processes and means of disposing of waste materials and places where the sun's going to, and all these luminaries projectors go for a cleaning cycle. So you know there's a, clearly a maintenance going on there. But, uh, I'm going to pass you over to one for her take on this. Hello. Okay, so today we're going to talk about energy and we're going to relate it to the research that we do. So did you know the word energy from the Indo-European root is poti, meaning powerful, and from the Greek word energia means activity or operation, basically being at work. To fully grasp the workings of our world, one must understand the various kinds of energy. Every single event that occurs in this world is an ener energy transformation of a particular type. The sum total of energy in the world is constant. It's an infinite flow and it manifests itself in various forms. These forms can undergo transformations. Energy can only be indirectly observed and measured as it manifests itself in these different forms. It can be further characterized through its observed properties. So, what kind of energies are there? Well, basically, they're all either kinetic or potential. Kinetic energy is due to movement. Potential energy is stored and waiting to happen. Now, these can be further broke down by the characteristics of the energy itself. So we have different kinds. We have mechanical, thermal, electrical, nuclear, sound, electromagnetic, chemical, light, and thoughts, just to name a few. So let's talk about carbon. Carbon is a chemical element, and it's a pretty common one. It's the sixth most common element in the world, 
and the 15th most common in our Earth's crust. Unlike a lot of other chemical elements, you can see some forms of carbon. Diamonds are one form of carbon. So, science says that most of the carbon is deep in the Earth. For once, I'll sort of agree with them. Amorphous carbon is the third form, a third form of carbon, and it's a lot harder to see since unlike diamonds and graphite, it doesn't have a crystalline structure. It's commonly known as coal. So carbon is the building block for all life on Earth, and a good chunk of the total amount of it that's held in the Earth is living or dead organic molecules. So, how does this tie to volcanoes? Well, the carbon cycle comes from the volcanoes, from the process happening in the underworld. And eventually, after it comes to surface and cools, it becomes rock or mineral. It does become our new land. This is the creation process. Angel technologies below are what cause lava, the carbon, and the volcanoes. These are the vents of the underworld and the designed waste and recycle system. Through the creation system, what is needed gets used. What isn't needed or has fault is pushed to the waste holding tanks or the magma chambers. When the basins get full, they release and a cleaning occurs. These are our eruptions. Some have a steady flow for long periods. So you have to kind of think of it that all these different tubes are leading to a certain spot, the basin, the holding tank. And if there's so many, it has to steady flow out. We can see this with Hawaii. So I took some time and outlined a whole lot of the tubes that, that indeed lead to Hawaii. And you can see why it had to have a steady flow. Somewhere along the line, it must have bottlenecked recently. And I think that led to the explosion or old tubes that weren't used opened up. So then we do have our exploders, the ones that blow every time. Um, they're usually high in silicon, and when they become full, they do blow. So when this cleanse happens, the lava comes up from the chamber through the lava tubes. These tubes appear to be constructed, as we can see here in these photos. There is little to no lava traces after the tube has cleared. So this tells me it's designed to push the waste up and out and clear the tube until the next cleaning cycle. These lava tube systems run for miles and miles and connect to grids on the underside. As we can see here, I've connected several of these systems. We speculate there must be shutoffs uh, um, to these, so to speak. Something will shut off the flow, which allows the tubes to be cleared. The ancients knew this process very well, and they shared these processes with us. We used um, ancient Egyptian script to show one of the many processes that lead to the need to expel the waste. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over so we can get into how these conclusions were came to by us. Thank you. For a more technical breakdown of the process, I'm going to play some clips made by Roger from Ludfossil University, who has been experimenting with particle acceleration. So please don't copyright strike me, Roger. I'm one of the good guys. And I know this information will help you. You see, I agree. They are reinventing the wheel over and over as they will demonstrate after these clips. Okay, Roger from uh, Mudfossil University today was discussing ether again, which I've been working on for years now. And we have photographed it in experiments. 
and sent all that information off years ago to all the top universities, never heard a word. But all of a sudden, they decide they have discovered ether. Now, I think this is kind of disgraceful, to be perfectly honest with you. Plato and all the rest of them back then knew about ether. According to the ancients, they um, spelled it ether or ether. It's also called the quintessence. Now, all of a sudden, they decided, oh, we found the fifth element. Well, guess what, my friends? Fifth element was also in Plato's Timaeus. Speaking about air, Plato mentions there is a most translucent kind called the name ether. It's really very, very, very poor form. Now, um, I, everybody knows I've been working on ether and light and everything for years. I've been posting this. Nobody's been paying attention to it, really. I mean, very few. And um, so I got this from my friend today, Aaron. Physicists confirmed the discovery of a fifth force. Right? They're taking credit for discovering something that's been known for throughout history. Physicists confirmed discovery previously unknown. It's not previously unknown. The fifth fundamental force. This is really not right. Somebody should speak out against these people. They do this kind of stuff and take credit for things that they've dismissed and then all of a sudden they decide that it's, it's good again. I'm going to show you the real facts. This is ether right here. All these dots are ether. And the reason they are glowing like this is because it's in a darkened room and a laser pulse of red laser light coming through here, which only has a tiny, tiny, tiny dot right in the center here. But when it comes through, it forces the opening of space around it and forces these regions to go into other people's regions. They glow at that point. All the molecules in space own a region, they're happy there. Once you start pushing something through that ocean of particles that are happy, they become disturbed. When they do that, they glow. All right, you saw that field coming through, and what it is is there's a little dot in the center, and it's crushing through there just like it does with a sonic wave and a jet, breaking the sound barrier. Now, there's the particle beam. All right, that's all it is right there. That's the beam. That's what comes from this and what causes this wave to open up is this beam. Well, all of a sudden it's saying, holy smokes, I'm being sucked in faster. You see that? That's accelerating. You can't tell me that's not accelerating. It's not a person on the face of this planet can say, oh, that's nothing. No, that doesn't mean anything. Well, yes, it means something. It means that that thing is accelerating. And when it starts accelerating, it's being pulled faster because it's being forced through this venturi they're piling up here and and becoming excited because they can't get to here they're forcing each other through here and when they explode out the other side which they have to ex accelerate there is no option whatsoever and the reason they're starting to accelerate here i mean to ex uh, excite here is because they're being impeded more and more and more and more and then all of a sudden by the time you get here they are just being blocked almost completely and forcing each other through here it's a venturi two rounded parts of two is actually construction nails and that's only a construction red laser very inexpensive less than fifty dollars you do this whole thing do it at home and i have other people doing it now and i'm going to show you some fa fabulous shots i just got yesterday uh, we're looking into them right now. Very, very interesting. Now, what comes out of here is the particle beams that we all know about. Is these? They call that the um, uh, what do you call it? The patterns that they, they the double slit experiment where they have the things on the back, the impedance or whatever they call. It. Um, I can't think of it. But anyway, all it is is these are electrons coming out of here, forcing each other away from this side and that side. So you're seeing them get away, and by the time they come out here, they can sort of flip around all they want. But they, primarily, this is pushing this way, and this is pushing this way. They're both pushing both ways. So you end up with a beam in the center. That's why you see the real bright beam in the center. Now, and then you see these rays, because this is saying stay away from here. This guy's saying stay away from here. So they start to build up these arrays. Now and that's called atomization, plasma, whatever you want to call it. But at this point, these electrons no longer own a region. Before they own their own region. They all had their own little dot 
that they own. And they say, okay, this is my place. Don't anybody push me. And when they push me, I'm going to go. And that's what's happening. And this right here shows you the ether. And that is, this, if anybody can explain to me how these little dots are formed after a light which we saw accelerated. I don't care what anybody says, that was accelerated. It's coming out of here in white chaos. These little tiny fibers are coming out which show where the particles are. Those are the particle trails. They are headed by these fields. Those fields are from polarized ether surrounding the tiny, tiny particle in the center which is charged. It's negative. It's going faster than hell, smashing into the ether here, inducing a current around itself in a right-hand turn as it goes through space. And I have pictures of that too. And I have pictures of this showing this right here is a crushed field. You see that? You see the difference in this one here and this one here? These are round. This one. You see this crushing in here and this crushing in here? That's forcing that one to, to, to be more massive. It's crushing it. It's turned purple instead of the, the lower frequency color. This is a reverse spinning electron. No field around it. It's reverse spinning. They create a, in the right hand rule. Electricity goes that way. It spins this way. Well, that one's going that way and spinning the other way around, and it's breaking its fingers off. So there's no magnetic field there. That is, and also that collided with something and made a very interesting result. And that's the result right there. That was that white particle. It transitioned into one of these somehow and bled off that. And this is what I told you. That's the spinning of the electron, the right-hand rule. As it goes flying out of the accelerator, you see how they're expanded here and then they contract. These are less energetic. That's an extremely energetic one for some reason. It, 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 was, it came through in a different orientation. The others, they were whatever the difference is. This is, is much more energetic than these other ones. And you can see, because it's drifting to the left, it's probably spinning to the right, maybe spinning to the left, I don't know. But it, it's, it's going to have one of these spins to it, and it's supposed to be spinning this way if it's going that way. And I believe, well, I know it's going this way. Now, and I believe it's spinning this way because it's drifting to the left. That would be the natural thing. It would hear here, and then it can't quite get to the same place each time. And it, it, that would give it that left drift. So, that's all I can see. It's a right-hand rule. And that's light spinning through a single slit, I believe that was. And again, this goes back years ago, so some of these pictures, well, I, mean, I know all the pictures I'm talking about. That I can't remember. Single slit, double slit, I don't remember. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this. This is Rodney Warren from uh, Australia, and I worked on this years ago, and and um, and these are his pictures, and they, they cannot be surpassed, I don't think. However, I'm going to show you one that I got yesterday that's got got me interested. This is the plasma coming out of the accelerator. As it steps down, it presents this in two waves. I've seen this a number of times. It looks like it looks like a particle to me and it looks like a torus and I think I might have some idea how it's working with capacitive and inductive reactants. Somehow. Okay. Roger mentioned play to one of us already knowing this information and he is correct. In fact my Nazca line work, geoglyph, petroglyph and hieroglyph research confirms this as does sacred geometry and scriptures. Everyone knew these processes in those days. Your experiments are missing some vital components Roger, but caution is advised when proceeding here on in. Here is what the Nazca lines have been teaching me. Ok, as you can see with this image, we have our square wave generator in the scene, other parts of technologies and a very important piece of the line work, the right hand rule. In this image you can see the square wave generator, the little brinth, the particle accelerator and even multi-level structures. Again, square wave generator, particle accelerator, high frequency injection, I hope you're seeing a pattern form in here. This repeats over and over across the Nazca lines. Very detailed technical information.
Here's a frequency guide I found online and I've added various geoglyphs to it to help you understand their meaning and purposes. Due to our research, I haven't as yet had time to give the Nazca lines the full attention and presentation they need, but hopefully over the videos we have made for you, uh, you are now being looked at them with new eyes. The decoders blueprints, technical and structural information detailing layers in the underworld. As you can see, I have arranged the sea life in the lower frequencies and the flying species in the higher frequencies. On the correct map there are also location markers for various technologies in the underworld that relate to the workings of our luminaries and other worldly processes. The direction they face usually meaning the direction of the signal it may be transmitting to or receiving from. These are activations and deactivations and possibly the other informations being transmitted. Those signals we have shown you on the mimic map. The earthquakes are usually a sign some technologies came online. Now I mentioned proceeding with caution as this technology is also what is responsible for the arts and acts of creation and a great many other things depending on the configuration. By design this technology will manifest material before your very eyes which Roger pointed out at the end of his video, those charged particles he noticed. Because Roger's setup seems to be missing some vital components, it is not up to its potential and could be considered safe as there is no magnetised walls, wave or frequency injection, but it still achieved the right hand rule and produced visible matter. This doesn't seem to be radioactively charged. So what does radioactively charged mean? As you've seen with the Nazca lines, there is wave and frequency injection which produces different results. The technology in the underworld is obviously built to a much larger scale than humans can comprehend, as the likes of Enoch and Ezekiel struggle to describe, and as such will produce larger quantities of matter which they create during their running cycles, as the sun process shown in the 12 gates presentation demonstrated. It had to go through a cleaning cycle and a cycle of solar rejuvenation, ready for the next sunrise. This material is basically radioactive material or nuclear waste. This is also what we would call lava. And as one conscience mentioned, it is managed and ejected into our realm and becoming landmass or sand if ejected into water. This is part of the creation process. By design it creates, maintains and destroys. The heart of this part of the process is located at naught point not on our grid. I'm going to let Santos Bonacci give this a breakdown of what you are looking at. This is what uh, is called Brahma. Yeah, the creator. This is Brahma. Brahma is associated with Abraham, Abraxas, mm -hmm. Abrasion, as I said before, mm -hmm. um, Abracadabra. This is the Abracadabra of creation. This is Brahma. Um, Brahma is also associated with the Ram. He is the creator. Vishnu is the preserver. Vishnu preserves all of this. And, and then Shiva, Satan, will destroy it. Well, I mean, he doesn't destroy it totally. He destroys it as in the preserver is the maintainer and the destroyer does the other man maintaining. If you don't destroy, you can't. Cycles will not continue. There's the creative half of the ecliptic, then yeah. there's the destructive half. That's how it works. Some fantastic words and information from Santos there, who has been a great help to this research with his wealth of knowledge and information sharing. Between the observant Stan Smith, Santos and our research, we have concluded the halo projections in the sky which mainstream are calling sun dogs are what Ptolemy termed epicycles, so in essence this research confirms Ptolemy's model as correct. So what are these halos? They are part of the projector system that is projecting our luminaries into the heavens, as above so below pertains to this relationship, a physical model in the underworld and a projection in the heavens with an in invisible link between the two, which can be noticed by lightning and tornadoes, the rotating vortex field rising up to the invisible halo. 
But what is making the projection, you ask? OK, I'm going to decode the Eye of Horus for you, to show you how it works. The Eye of Horus is a particle accelerator which uses high frequency injection. The Eye itself is a chamber with which you would place your hot creative coals as told in scripture. The hot coals are the radioactive particles it creates and ejects from the eyes round about it, as described by Ezekiel. The snake depictions represent the created matter or is in this image your hot coals as requested sir. This material is radioactively charged and contains the same potential amount of energy as the voltages used in the accelerator that created it. This is a power source, 100% over unity free energy with a very long lifespan. The cones you see depicted near the Tree of Life scenes are being radioactively charged and used as the power source for the vehicle the projector is attached to. I think going by various scriptures it is a vehicle of sorts that is moving the projector around in the underworld. The projection and the heavens mimicking its every move. This applies to all luminaries and their projectors which obviously have different configurations and roles. Do we have any evidence of particle accelerators and radioactively charged materials to relate this to in the real world? Of course we do. I'm going to take you back to the 1800s and see what Mr. Tesla was working with in those times. If you go for this Freedom of Information release on Mr. Tesla, you will see that he was working on an accelerator that was given to him to look at as it apparently had a side effect of producing ball lightning which Mr. Tesla describes as being a very scary event as usually it would explode with devastating effects. From these documents you will see that they have Mr. Tesla offering to sell and install particle accelerators for a fee of 25,000 UK pounds. The research was based on harnessing and trapping the materialized ball lightning which could, not, which could hold the same amount of energy as the system that produced it again. 100% over unity technology. The system can also project particles up to 100 miles or more with speeds around 350 miles per second. And Mr. Tesla stated he could build a death ray for the defence of Great Britain from air attack. The technology seemingly able to melt aircraft engines up to 250 miles away. What I did notice is that in these documents the wording also in Mr. Tesla's handwriting appears more work related to accelerators. Now when I look at CERN and think about these documents, CERN does not look like something Mr. Tesla could install, let alone have all the components for. So it seems to me this is misleading. It seems to me someone has inserted paperwork for Mr. Tesla's so they have a person to use for introducing more advanced technology into the world. Technology we can see originates from the underworld. So fear not, dear Tesla fans, he is innocent of any wrongdoing and seems to have been used by those that hide this as and when needed. Mr. Tesla did invent and make derivatives from his work with accelerators which are still in use today. So our projections in the sky, we are either seeing the insides of the projection chamber and the effects of its contents, or harnessed on electromagnetically trapped ball lightning on a creator sized scale not the smaller scale observations mentioned in human experiments. As an aside, when some nuclear power plants explode, the roof seems to get blown off. Then the disaster has to be sealed, a sarcophagus created around the nuclear lava that is created to contain it. The seal of the 144,000 in scripture is this exact same process. The angel technology has been sealed below in the underworld so that in the event of a catastrophe it is already sealed and contained, kept in a room until a great day of judgment some 1000 years into the future. The sarcophagi under ancient temples and pyramids are location markers of said angel technologies below, glare glyphs telling their story to a now unseeing and unknowing world audience. And so it seems, at some point in our history, mankind had an event a meeting with a higher knowledge who introduced us to these very advanced technologies and created the components 
for our electromechanical realm that we call earth. Our iniquities were removed and our sins forgiven. We were advanced scientifically and we developed into better civilized beings. Our sin was ignorance. We did not understand how anything worked from a scientific viewpoint, but this quickly changed as our ancestors have depicted everywhere. Okay, so the these are the two uh, cruises that I look that we looked into for trying to figure out what the heck they got going on for the Polynesian Islands. So the first one is coming from New Zealand. So where the little boat is, that's where they start. And they follow the arrows up and around New Zealand. They stop along New Zealand. They then shoot across to Tasmania. They go up and visit the shores of Australia. They go up north of Australia. Then they come back over and they start heading out to the islands. They go out to Fiji and they go out to Tonga and they, they head on out heading um, east towards the east gates. Now the black line is the international dateline split. So there's about 20 hours difference in, in some of these areas when you cross over the dateline. Now when we go up to the other one coming off of California. We start up here in Baja, California. They shoot out to Hawaii. They do a roundabout all the Hawaiian Islands. They then head out and go down the Line Islands. They end up um, Tusamotu. And then they hit a couple more islands and they head back to Baja California so what they're doing is they are confusing people by visiting all of these islands are out here so there's so many it would be so easy to hide and skew this data and tell people that maybe they're in one place when they're really not these are separate sets of islands if people go and look at the time and the times of these islands and what day they're on it does it has a lot to tell there you know some of these islands are are very very close but they've already went into Sunday where some of them are sitting in Saturday you know mid-evening so it's it's a clear split of the map so you know that's telling me our map is right that this is where it splits these ones on New Zealand are going to be leading up into the East Gate where we're never going to get and the ones coming from California are coming down around by the West Gates. None of them are ever crossing over. Okay, so the divides in the map. Our research reveals they are in these locations to hide the 12 gates. Further research of ours has revealed something very special and meaningful. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it gives us great pleasure to present to you the 12 pearly gates of heaven. The 12 gates in Revelation 20 long belong to the New Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven to the new earth, verse 10, shining with the glory of God, verse 11. John describes the city. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, verse 12. The gates are miraculous in their construction. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of one single pearl, verse 21. And the gates of the New Jerusalem will never be shut, verse 25. The pearl was esteemed of the greatest value among the ancients. It is an appropriate emblem of the highest truth. It is the only precious stone which the art and skill of man cannot improve. Introducing the three gates in the north, the gate of Reuben, the gate of Judah and the gate of Levi. Introducing the three gates in the east, the gate of Joseph, the gate of Benjamin and the gate of Dan. Introducing the three gates in the south, the gate of Simeon, the gate of Issachar, the gate of Zebulun.
and introducing the three gates in the west, the gate of Gad, the gate of Asher and the gate of Naphtali. The gates of the New Jerusalem never close, they are eternal safety and peace in the New Jerusalem. There are no enemies to shut the gates against. Access to the heavenly kingdom on the new earth is free and unhindered, and the glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it, Revelation 21-26. The gates face every direction of the compass, and their perpetual openness invites everyone to partake of the goodness of God's grace, Revelation 22-17. Welcome to the realm. As you can see people, our research is revealing a very intelligent creator who has created a realm which can only be described as a technological masterpiece, a construct beyond our comprehension as our ancestors found and tried their best to describe. You will also notice we are decoding geoglyphs, petroglyphs and hieroglyphs. The reason for that is because they are telling the exact same story, the only difference being the descriptions of the angels and this is due to their varying roles and different looks in different geographic locations. They are still part of the same mechanisms that give us our luminaries and a great many other things. A construct designed and maintained to the highest standard with the most ornate descriptions one can possibly imagine. We hope you enjoy our research and information and that it helps you see and recognize there is a creator their glory being revealed in a way we did not expect to see, let alone find. We fully accept this and look upon our realm with new eyes and knowledge, a knowledge that seems to have been lost yet is depicted everywhere in sacred geometry, scriptures, geoglyphs, petroglyphs and hieroglyphs. How did it come to be that we have forgotten all that was once known everywhere in our realm? I'll leave you with that thought, so until next time, it's goodbye from us.